Hey there! Today, Isaac Wolf will be doing another Looney Tunes cartoon commentary reaction video, the lesser known short. One for the release of 60th anniversary on this day. Bartholomew vs. The Wheel, produced in 1963 and released on February 29, 1964. Leap Day! It was Robert McKimson's last one shot cartoon in the original Looney Tunes lineup until the Seven Arts era. Uh, sometime after this short was completed, Warner Brothers Animation closed down. By the time the short was released, the Patty Frilling Enterprises was already under Warner lot, and soon after they were commissioned to start producing new Looney Tunes shorts on a somewhat lower budget. Bartholomew vs. The Wheel is very different from your typical one-shot Mary Melody's cartoon, despite this time you're getting more experimental with the one-shots, going with a more stylized approach. That began with Chuck Jones' Now Hear This the previous year. Gonna have more of a UPA-ish look to it, akin to James Thurber's artwork. Alright, let's roll it. There. Yeah, as I've already mentioned, these one shots use the abstract WB logo sequences before the Patty Freeling made it the standard Lucian's logo. And note that using the Merry Go Round broke down for the Merry Melody's theme now. One of my favorite lines. Chris Freeling said was, I never knew if a film was making would be Looney Tunes or Mary Melodies. Now what the hell difference would it make anyway? This is a cute opening credit sequence, the wheel moving to the unusually lighthearted Bill Lava music beat. Alright. That's a picture of me. And that's both It's a cute way to do yeah, it's one dog. of those cutesy sixties cartoons Daddy's done in a childlike thing. Him. Kinda like but UPA and Paramount have done before. And Dino the Dinosaur is using Mel Blanks using his Dino the Dinosaur vocal effects for young Bartholomew. Like that. Ha! That's a weird looking cat. Once again, a Looney Tunes cartoon makes cats look bad. He was very lovable, and he did tricks too. Yeah, it is lovely cute. But of course, the cat has to steal Bartholomew's thunder in the craziest way possible. And yes, cats do like bones. Bartholomew was a good dog. But one day, yeah, look at that back thing up. happened to him. He yells just like Dino. As Mel Blanc did have the tendency to reuse voices. Especially after a car accident he was in. Oh, he's putting two and two together. Very nice visual effect of sorts. At first, I thought that McKinsey's unit had fallen ill, so they couldn't draw and paint them the way they normally could. So I had to make this cartoon while they were sick. Oh, it's like a little wind-up train. And it gets wrecked, just like a Norfolk summer freight. Yeah. That's the image you saw for those lobby cards I showed. Some decent animation, too. Despite the artwork looking a little like something Hanna-Barbera could have done. I love the run cycle. For once, the lot of this music even matches up with the action. They tried doing that for a while in this 1962-66 scores. Look how huge Bartholomew is now! He's bigger than the car! An Acme Movie Man. Their way of saying, see, this is still a Warner Brothers cartoon! And now Bartholomew's back to kind of a normal adult dog size. Well, normal when it comes to large dogs. He might have been mixed up. But he wasn't dumb. Yeah, I've known dogs that could be like that. Smart yet dumb at the same time. It was kind of wheel time. that Bartholomew hadn't caught, <laughs> except one kind. And it was real hard to catch. Look at the... That's a pretty weird looking airplane design. Yeah, if this were done in the 50s, the style probably would have been more relevant compared to the 60s. But he didn't give up. Not Bartholomew. Huh, you they just like, skipped forward. Bartholomew got a big surprise. And I lost my dog. Oh, he asked for it. It's karma. I called him and called him, but he didn't come home. It's a cool visual effect. Uh, Bartholomew the coming out of their mouths. Mr. Some neat solid the color characters. Said he didn't know where he was. Why would they be and all doing that? Anybody. Because Bartholomew was giving the townspeople trouble with biting away. their wheels. So now they're he mad either. he's gone? Ula <laughs> manga. As long as it sounds foreign. Those poodles, they look more like sheep with mouse tails. I like the way they walk. 
that one with the turret bit. <laughs> Nobody looked at him. Not even petted him. Like <laughs> how she's sliding <laughs> in a UPA kind of fashion. Or even a gold look video. And there wasn't even one wheel to chase. <laughs> Interesting intersection gag here. Stylized traffic light. Bartholomew was real sad. Oh, really? You'd think in a world where there's no wheels, Bartholomew would be happy because he hates wheels. So now chasing wheels One makes Bartholomew happy? He saw yeah. a picture in the window. The story he has quite a few plot a holes and such. Then he remembered Aww, about that big wheel that got him into all the trouble. Mm. He thought up a good idea. He would go home the same way. Are you sure? What if he gets into a plane that's not go back to his hometown? He's taking a big risk. Lord Mel Blanc gibberish. Tip the canoe. I wonder who that is. And how did they know he was coming home? Did he get word Everybody from a railroad station or something? They even forgave him for biting the wheels. Yeah, and all this celebration for a dog that had been giving him he trouble buying wheels and got lost and found its way home. Well, to be fair, and he, he liked them. And he they did forgive him, as the boy narrating says. The late Leslie Barringer. Oh, look at that. Now that's cute. He didn't hate anything anymore. Except what a dog is supposed to hate. Cats. Well, not all dogs hate cats, from my experience. I know a dog that liked them. Huh, he disintegrates! Here comes the mood whiplash. Bye now. It's a cute ending, but then you get this. Good thing the Rudy Lariva Romer cartridge didn't have that Big Ben soundtrack on the closing logo. <laughs> so there you have it. Bartholomew versus the wheel. The story is kind of flawed, as I pointed out. But John Dunn wasn't the best Looney Tunes and Mary Melody's writer. He'd get better when working for De Patty Frilling afterwards. Also, at least the art style is cute, along with the decent music for a change. Aside from that mood whiplash ending, from the cute by now to the eerie early version of the abstract closing sequence. Now to start wondering what my next cartoon commentary reaction will be, provided Warner Bros. Discovery doesn't put a halt to them. And speaking of which, release Coyote vs. Acme, damn it! Wow.